It's October the 14th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And you can find my videos in Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And because we are streaming live on YouTube, sometimes I have to look over to monitor the stream. And so what I'm going to do for you today is Unit 4. And everything, as I'm talking, is going to show up behind me on a green screen. I do work by myself completely. And so I do the work of many people at the one time. I wear many hats. 14, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known and as we are Dana definitely streaming. Proctologist.org. And that takes a few seconds to sort all of this out. So let's jump into the fray. And I mean, you want to understand at episode two uh, that you had, you know, episode one, uh, pilot episode and episode one is I'm building you a picture from the start. And as we progress through these episodes, you'll get a comprehensive understanding of every aspect that's available and that's important and pertinent to this. Uh, from every single angle you can imagine. So that's the point is where a lot of people will go to their news source, but I'm taking all the news sources and bringing it to you in, in this package that you're looking at right now. And so the, the, like the first thing I want you to really appreciate about this event in Japan, you know, it had an earthquake. And so the earthquake in Tokyo was lifting the roads up and shifting the roads and here's a prime example I'm going to show you in, in this video coming up. And I'll keep talking as it's playing. And so this is uh, in Tokyo. It's miles away from the epicenter. off of Tokyo. tsunami follows and the tsunami washed out this is offshore and you can imagine it's just unbelievable that you know there's this much devastation I'm gonna show you and because my last video I used a copyrighted uh, news clip it, it won't play in Japan or, or certain other countries and so I, I, the, the clip I'm going to show you was the one I got this morning very quick, but I had no copyright on it, and I, I checked it out on a dummy site to see if the stuff got a copyright before I put it up on my site ever again. And so I'm going to play that in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the tsunami. So this is not a super high quality as it starts here. I'll leave it all the way through it. And, but what it does show you is that something you haven't seen very much is the wave coming in. And the, the intensity of it, the gulfs can just barely get out of the way of traveling that fast. And certainly uh, tens of thousands of people couldn't, uh, millions of people were displaced. So the, the tsunami, if that didn't go through the country, the whole country would have been seen that 
vote in the country, the country because it's humanity filled with human rights and And just communities that are washed away. These images were taken from a condominium in Takajo, City, Miyagi, over one kilometer from the sea. The man was filming from the third floor, needed to evacuate to the fourth floor after the water started rising. How much damage and how absolutely crazy the damage was and how fast. And as you're looking at it right now, the buildings and homes of some 9,000 residents have all been swept away. Because when you're driving, there's a lot of obstacles. You have to make turns and you have to get around 90 degree corners and you have to slow down for intersections and blah blah blah. And people are pulling up the highway trying to get over the road. Totally unimaginable. You know, I'm suffering just that amount. That day there was hundreds of aftershocks, major aftershocks. That any one of them were going to be Tsunami. So the country Tsunami was waves even came waves. up the elevation. Everything, all the telephone poles, all the infrastructure. And then everybody you know, was trying to save themselves. And wait, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm sure that's what you're doing. And so the whole country was was shaken like a blanket for minutes at a time. Nothing had his plan to be built to the extent of non-hope. But this one was a 9.3. We downgraded it to new plants over the last few years to lower the 9.1 than it was. But it was actually a 9.3. That was confirmed all over the world at Jerusalem. This is part of the original country of the public. But think about this stuff coming through the nuclear power plants throughout the entire coastline. And so the last couple of episodes showed that the buildings were cracked. Now I mean they deadened it, and so we expected them to be cracked. But they were cracked. They were on Central fire. Central Kisanova City has been largely destroyed. Before the tsunami came through, and reactors along the coastline, like Diney and other reactors that I've showed, talked about earlier. Okay, so let me get off of this one. And so tonight is about Unit 4, and so during tonight's stream, I want you to think about David Suzuki. I'm going to play a clip for you, and it's, uh, I can't tell till I click on it. I think it's like 40 seconds or 30 seconds long, and he's talking about Unit 4 spent fuel pool at Japan, and this is so important because this is what we were fed through all the media and through every source out there, and I fell for it too. Don't think I didn't. But then I went down the rabbit hole of trying to understand it, and, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Plus, we're going to talk about basic headlines, but we have to include everything in order so you got a comprehensive understanding of it. And so here comes to David Suzuki, where he says, now, David Suzuki is extremely educated. David Suzuki, looking at the same pictures that we're looking at tonight, and just let me touch up on that for a second. And so what they're talking about is that they're going in that reactor there, but they're claiming it's in this building. These are the official pictures. And they claim that the ceiling looks like behind me inside of this building. Now, anybody that's got an education looks at this, or without even an education, would say this is ludicrous. This is a fabrication. But this fabrication went so high up the totem pole, even David Suzuki perpetrated it out there as if he didn't think anybody in the audience is going to be recording him and put something so salacious a statement up on the internet for one second i don't have the background or the education or the media savory that this man has but i would have been aware of it trust me and my pr firms would have warned me trust me and so he wasn't just some random person this was an extremely educated person who knew better but still told you this particular story. So here comes the story. That the fear is if there's another earthquake of a seven or above that that building will go and then all hell breaks loose. And the probability of a seven or above earthquake in the next three years is over 95%. I have seen a paper which says that if in fact the fourth plant goes under an earthquake and those rods are exposed it's bye-bye Japan. 
and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is. So he contends if there was a uh, problem and that disappeared, that there was an accident where that caught fire or fell over or something like that, then that would be a catastrophic event. Well, guess what? That catastrophic event had already happened, and this was the cover-up. And everybody out there that knows better bought into it, but we're not going to quite go down that road. What we're going to do is show you the documentation and the information to support these assertions. And so, let's get started. And I got a really doozy for everybody today. This is, um, I just got so much work put in on this. And so once again, just let me reinforce what I had just said to you one more time, that all the media carried that same um, headline. And at some point, you never know, Japanese. So why is it every time I go looking for something, it disappears? And when I'm not looking for it, it's right there in my face all the time. Because that's the way nature works, right? And so, BBC, you can see the little picture they got alongside. Now, I mashed all this together, and Unit 4 is over on the right-hand side, and Unit 3 is right alongside of it, and the common spent fuel pool is 50 meters behind that with 9 million pounds, and that was underwater and breached and caught fire and blew up, caught fire and blew up, caught fire and blew up. And so does these reactors. And as you can see, uh, these are all the official pictures, and Seth Dorn even claimed that he was inside of Unit 4. Here I am inside of Unit 4. So just listen to it. Now, we actually covered the whole video here before. But I'm just going to play you a little clip where he says he's inside of Unit 4. The heart of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour. And he got less than an x-ray, dose of an x-ray, which is patently absurd. <clears throat> and so he's claiming that building there, like all the media just showed you, was inside of this building. But they didn't show you these two pictures side by side and tell you that. <laughs> right? And so I'm going to show you the headlines. Let's go through the headlines on Unit 4. But we do need to lay groundwork for each of these episodes because there are people coming by and don't understand the whole subject. But if they sit there and watch the video, they're most likely going to get it right away. That's the beauty of what we do, is we provide that documentation immediately, uh, immediate gratification, right? And so unit five and six is for another day. I got a big bunch of stuff on unit five and six. And so here we go on unit four. You need to crowdfund a guillotine, <laughs> Atom. You are, Atom. You are correct. <laughs> in the comment section a beautiful girl by Dana live streaming on YouTube that comment section is just rocking and rolling and uh, let me keep going because I'll digress if I'm not careful top US if nuclear official and there's a half an hour question and, and answers after if we can get any questions you know about this today's topic that people didn't understand or people want to call me out and say that all my headlines are fake and that I made them all up and that I photoshopped all the pictures and blah 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 and, but we will have a loose, try to have a loose conversation, even though you don't want to, and we'll go through the documentation for anybody who thinks that some way or another I'm misrepresenting or misconstruing you know, the, the event itself. Top U.S. nuclear official raises the possibility of widespread nuclear fallout caused by the spent fuel pool. Now, that was March the 16th, five days later. That's not David Suzuki a few years later. This is March the 16th. So this is a different one. That's Jacko. Uh, radioactivity is being released directly into the atmosphere. March the 15th, IAEA at 12.15 p.m. Directly into the air. And so what does that look like? Um, well, this one blew up on the 14th, the day before. So this is probably what they're alluding to. And so what you see in the model above me is Noah's model of that release. But not, you know, Three, they only showed us unit, they only told us about unit one release. And they, then they talked about unit two release because they didn't like the picture of unit one, so they showed us the one that had still had the billing intact. But as we know, that don't exist, and we, we covered that in 
uh, the first uh, pilot episode dramatically, right? And I shouldn't say dramatically, but well, it is when you think about the documentation I'm showing you and anybody that's trying to debunk the the people that are concerned about this have to debunk every single one of these headlines. And if they can't, if there's a single headline there they can't debunk, then we debunk them. But what we do, unfortunately, is we're forced to overwhelm any opposition, right, or any criteria that somebody might put on us to prove our point. We overwhelm them with data every single time. No end in sight for radioactive releases in Fukushima and could last months. What's the date on that? March the 25th. No end in sight for radioactive releases. Let me repeat that one more time. To, and that, that continues till today and, and will continue till the end of time. There is no technology because we won't even try. But let's keep going. And we're going to cover all of these topics as in each episode is going to be a different topic. And we're going to flush this out for one hour because I think that's enough. Trust me, I can go four hours every day. That's not an issue either. New York Times on ejection of nuclear material. Confidential U.S. documents suggest pieces of the fuel blew up to a mile away. And some between the two units were bulldozed over. Well, a pound of it will kill everybody in the front row of a theater in one minute. And so uh, it'll kill everybody in that theater, 300 people in 20 minutes. And every 20 minutes, if you fill the theater up, you can kill all these people till the end of time. And so they bulldozed it in the ground. Does that mean now that it become um, that it become harmless? That it turned to fury dust? Of course it did, because it was atomized and aerosoled, and came across in the jet stream. Does that mean it's any less volatile or any less carcinogenic, or any, excuse me, or any less dangerous? No. Whether it's solid or its parent daughter, a gas, it's still a, a vicious. That's why we have terrorist laws. That's why we have nuclear uh, holding sites. We don't have a repository. There is no such thing as a re repository. There never will be. There'll be a hole in the ground where they'll dump everything and tell you everything is fine. It's like a banana or like a potato chip or like walking in the sunshine or like getting on an airplane or like sleeping next to somebody or like to drink and water potassium. But it's always like potassium or bananas or everything else. And so these people are lying to you flat right in your face. That's an outrageous lie. And I covered that heavily yesterday a bit. But we will do episodes directly on the lies coming up next week or the week after. Worse than a meltdown, next week is all Japan headlines. Spent nuclear fuel pool catches fire. Worse than a meltdown. Because they took the reactor is a meltdown. And then it turns into a corium. And that's just unimaginably bad. It's just, uh, you can't sell the land in the UK and Ireland, Scotland and Ukraine because of the Chernobyl fallout. You can't drink the milk or still eat the meat 28 years later, but that chain reaction stopped after 10 days. But the reason was, was because it was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs because it's cannibalized and everything around it. It's a breeder reactor. You, it, it cannibalizes everything till the end of time. So think about this way where normally you have to throw logs on the fire all the time to keep this great big fire going. This thing stays there at five, six, seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And everything that falls in on top of it is immediately atomized and aerosolized and ionized and radiated and has a, an extra atomic weight because it was bombarded with fissionable products. Let's keep going. So the spent nuclear fuel pool catching fire, what that means is that each of the spent fuel pools is where they take the reactor to cool down for a decade or two. And so spent fuel pool holds an enormous amount compared to the reactor. And that it has already gone through a chain reaction. It's already two million times worse than the original element. The original you can probably pick it up with your hands and gloves. But once it went through the chain reaction, you can't get near it, it'll kill you instantly. And it'll melt your organs if you're close to it, within a few hundred feet of it, within 40 minutes. You're dead. And if you walk past it a couple of weeks later, you'll die. That's why you won't see Harvard or Yale or Stanford or Oxford or MIT or any of the creepy, major, um, disgusting machines that are out there. The lion sacks of dirts. Would be like Chernobyl on steroids if the spent fuel pull catches fire, says nuclear engineer who worked at the identical plant. And that each reactor hold 3,450 fuel assemblies. Let me 
Say that again. E tree. This is a guy who worked at the identical plants. Washington Post, March the 14th. Never been corrected. Nobody's ever come out and called him on it. Nobody ever said, that's that's not true. There's only 200 assemblies. No. There's 3,450 assemblies. And each one is around 1,500 pounds. Each one's got eight, 80 rods into it, each assembly. And each rod is a, a, 18 pounds. And so each rod is 12 feet. And each rod is capable of exterminating the entire planet. Atomized in aerosol and released into the environment. And left. And this stuff is, you know, a gram of it produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. I kid you not. That's an invisible snowstorm with a gram. What is 5 million pounds, which is what you're looking at, dear. That atomized in aerosol is missing from that reactor four. See, David Suzuki, when he was talking about that, he, you know, he was just one of many people that talked about it, that, that put that story out there to get, because everybody, you know, there's millions of people here in Canada that believe everything he says. And so everybody, then everybody gets fed a story that all the rods, you know, a few months later, all the rods are finally removed from Unit 4, and everybody's like, wow. But remember, the tsunami ran through the whole coastline, took out all the nuclear plants. They all couldn't go into coal shutdown. They all started to melt down. There was no way to restore power. There was no one in... Were you able to go swim across that river, that tsunami I was showing you earlier? Huh? And there was hundreds of earthquakes following that. Earth, major earthquake. And thousands over the next week. Very hard to do anything. Very unstable. Everybody ran away from the plant as they blew up. And you would have too. Let's keep going. But what they done was they spun everything and they're still trying to do it. And I can't tolerate that anymore. And that's why we exist. High radiation levels around the plant prevents helicopters from dumping water and spent fuel rods at Fukushima. Do you got any idea how desperate that is? And how hopeless and pointless and useless? And how it's just meant to pacify the media and say, oh, they're getting water on it with the helicopters. But it turned out they couldn't. Chernobyl, there was over 600 pilots. They all died of severe radiation poisoning. Every one of them. 600. But they only, oh, if you go to the official numbers, there's like 40 people died at Chernobyl. They don't bother talking about the liquidators that were liquidated. 600,000 of them to 400,000 conscripted. They don't talk about that. They, they, they kidnap, and I, I played that clip for everybody yesterday, how they kidnap people off the streets for Chernobyl. Water cannons are unable to spray the reactor. Turns away because radiation levels were too high. They sent in special forces. The military. Fearless. And they were wiped out. And they don't tell you about that. But it's out there. You can find it if you look. Damage spent fuel pool number four had 204 unused fuel rods inserted before the quake. Plus, scientists say another 9.0 mega quake may hit at the end of the year. But think about this, though. And this is major... Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency assumed that once the aftershock hits the pole and it's damaged, the fuel rods get to 900 degrees Celsius, melting out of zirconium cover 2.3 hours later. As the alloy is destroyed, it emits hydrogen. Now, hydrogen doesn't need a fire to go boom, boom. It just needs oxygen. Right? And Kevin Blanche had covered um, these, random, these random fires. <laughs> Dana Durnford, I'm live streaming. Hey, this is, what bank is this? Yeah, you guys called me all last week and now you're calling me again. This number is nuclearproctologist.org. I'm doing a live show right now and you're interfering with it and you were supposed to get me off your records. Please do that or I'll have my lawyer send you a letter. Understand? I've told you this about five different times. Don't do it anymore, or I'll have my lawyer contact you. Understand? Yeah, you better not be a problem. <laughs> well, I'm getting tired of it. Dammy spent fuel pull number four had 204 unused fuel rods inserted before the quake. What are you yelling for, Dana? I'm not yelling. I'm just trying to get my vocals clear. 
exposed radiation steam into the atmosphere after number four pull boil dry. And when it boils dry, it's game over. When it starts to melt down, it's game over. When a tsunami comes through and takes out all the infrastructure, game over. Yeah? Yeah. And all I'm doing is just showing you endless documentation. What do you want? Renewed nuclear chain reaction fear to number four. Renewed. March the 18th. Do you really take for a second that there's anything left? Are you that gullible? Are you, that, that, are you really truly that gullible? <laughs> I always break out laughing when I'm, even when I'm sitting here by myself, I read these headlines and blow up laughing. Oh, I gotta put that in that folder for a laugh later on. Nuclear expert. All right, and I mean, these, these headlines, as you go down to these stories, there's all kinds of supporting AP, writers, Fox, CNN, MSNBC. This, this, this is all just aggregated at energy news. This is not energy news. It just aggregates it from all the media on the planet. I die in 131, and there's 10 times more 132 than there is 131. I die, and there's 30 times more 133. They don't tell you about that, do they? And so whatever showed up here is what we're talking about. And there's 31 times more I die, 129 with 15 million year half-life and 2,000 elements with thousands of year half-lives and 10,000 that are classified. And they talk about I die in Arcesium because you're gullible. And you put your fate in a, in a science-based system with no checks and balances. Well, where are the checks and balances for the nuclear industry? Trust me. We're going to tell you the truth. We're not going to talk about bananas. We're not going to talk about potato chips or, or packs of cigarettes or a thousand times more natural radiation in the fish than there is from Fukushima, but there's radiation from Fukushima, see? That's why they say it that way. Nuclear expert fuel rods in the jumble at Fukushima Unit 4 pull. I'm clear if they're cracked. U.S. press in Japan on removal and fears terrorist activities at the plant. The terror, the, the, the terrorists might go there and get some. So that was November 6, 2013. Well, there's 10,000 Taliban, right? And you created millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, uh, 290,000 rapes in the military, 80,000 rapes in the military, uh, deaths, suicides in the military over a 10-year period. You also done that in Afghanistan, millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions of orphans, millions of widows, wrecked the entire country for what? The terrorists are going to get some, get us. The most gullible thing on the planet is the human population. I mean, studies show how, how the human population will just go along to get along. And they know better. Simon's report. Reactor number four spent fuel pool cracked from the earthquake. Cracked. May 23, 2011. Cracked from the earthquake because like the video I showed you earlier... The entire country was like a blanket for two minutes. There is nothing built that can stand that. We can't build anything that can stand up to that. To the earth picking it up and moving it, and the earth pulling apart, and the earth just, oh, with such, with such magnitude that people couldn't even stand up for minutes. Even humans couldn't stand up. Explosion heard near heavily damaged number four reactor. Now, I'm going to contend that that's the common spent fuel pool they're talking about, that, or that happened. But they switched it, and, and so you naturally interpret it as being unit for itself. But I threw that in there, and I just wanted to remind myself that these explosions, there was other explosions, but they couldn't account for it. But that was the spent fuel pool that they didn't want to mention. And we've covered that already. i got a lot more headlines on that stuff. Winds have turned hot particles to head south from Fukushima. A voice is to leave Tokyo. Be number four collapses. June the 4th. Well, see, all the buildings have plutonium in it. Majors reclaimed plutonium and uranium from missiles. So all the fuel they were using was extraordinary dangerous fuel. Should have never went through a chain reaction a second time. It's too unstable. They can get away with it for a little bit. And what they're doing is creating directed energy weapons isotopes for the pew, 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 for their Star Wars fantasy that will wreck this entire universe if left alone unchecked. There's no military out there you can trust. There's no government out there right now we can trust. Every one of them turned their back on us. Every one of them has staged wars, staged events to get us into wars, and staged attacks in your country to take away your freedoms. And then they're doing this at an accelerated pace because they think you might wake up and riot or turn into anarchy or have an apocalyptic event in their countries and they will lose their pensions. They will lose their pensions 
and among many other things, as you find out what they've done to you. Mystery explosion number four, caused by radiation dissolving water in the boiling, 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 spent fuel pool, boiling. This is September the 15th. There was no fuel pool. This was keeping the lie alive. And like at the pictures I showed you, it's definitive. Right? You can't argue with the pictures I got of these reactors and there is no spent fuel pool. That fuel pool cannot exist in this building. This building is destroyed completely throughout the building. It caught fire, blew up, caught fire, blew up, caught fire, blew up. You can't just hang out a welcome mat and, and expect people to ask you, how did you get to that? You can't get in the Chernobyl and do this. You can't get in there. It's three times the size of Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl, <clears throat> you know, 400 Hiroshima bombs in 10 days. If it lasted 20 days, it would be 800 Hiroshima bombs under their model. But under a real model, it's many, many times that is, is the point I'm trying to make for you. And so you can understand that this, this whole game they ran on you is, is, has to end. Nuclear is done. There is no future for nuclear. It, it's out of all the species on the planet got to go or nuclear got to go. And most likely, all the species on the planet are going to go. I mean, the Pacific Ocean is dead. It's a dead zone. And we've just done, and I'll cover that at the end of the show, but we've done 15,000 miles of this coastline. And I'll play a little small trailer because I'm talking about it, and I know how people are. So if you you can find all that documentation, 600 or um, 260 days of the last 365 days, we went out and went down the coastline. I got GPSs for everybody, high quality pictures, and then at the bottom of the pages, there's headlines for you. But you'll find the four previous expeditions in section one and section two has the recent six week west coast, right from Alaska, right through the other end of Canada. One end of Canada to the other end of Canada, the entire west coast of Canada that we done, crowdfunded in emergency expeditions in order to see the damage of Fukushima on our coastline. What we discovered is staggering. It's shocking in every sense of the word. There are all the species are missing on our entire coastline. And there's roughly 5,600 highly visible species and there's around 6,500 uh, visible species, most of these are the invertebrates without the backbones, but they're really tiny, but you can still see them with your eyes, most of them. They're like little shrimps, and they live in all the uh, 600 algae and, uh, and tidal zones where we expect at 15,000 miles of the coastline. And then, I'll cover that at the end of it. Many scientists are emphasizing precarious situation that the Fukushima spent fuel pool number four. This is the cover story to distract you from all the melted reactors along the entire coast of Japan. And because the tsunami and the earthquake destroyed the whole coast, and that's where all the reactors are, and each reactor needs a million gallons a minute. And if it don't get that, it starts to melt down within an hour to 90 minutes. And so after 90 minutes, if it's still not getting the cooling water, a million gallons a minute flowing through, dissipating the heat. But remember, and let me go over and touch on some of that for you. Let me go over and touch on some of that for you. Let me see if I can find a headline. That's Diney, 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 Diney. Hang on. Dana should be more organized, Dana. Uh, let me try some of these headlines. So, New York Times, that was November the 2nd. That's a good headline for everybody. For the first time, Tepco emits fuel deep inside three stricken plants, and we're not counting number four. Probably continue to experience bursts of fissions. Fissions at reactor one and three also. So there you go. New York Times. U.S. media only mentions report melt through at reactor one, not two and three. Almost all nuclear engineers have known since early on that the reactors have melted through the cores. 
all of them, including the Canadian sweetheart himself, Mr. Suzuki. He knew. He's privileged. He knew everything before I knew, before you knew, before anybody else knew. The actual details. He's in that loop. He knew, and the, but he still came out and perpetrated this hoax about number four. Because that was a distraction, so you wouldn't look at all the other reactors. And I'm probably not going to find it. I'll jump back to number four. Japanese Times, walls are cracked below the ground of Fukushima reactor buildings, as if the damage above the ground is not enough. And sources say a thousand radioactive materials are released, but there's actually, that's just one source, right? But the reality of it was, there's 2,000 we know, we can identify, that we create, that are man-made, and there's 10,000 that are classified as a byproduct. Like the iodine is a byproduct of the chain reaction of uranium plutonium, so is the cesium, so is all of these isotopes. But it's the decays and the way they decays, and then they use bananas in that equation to confuse everybody, can't have a conversation. The melted cores crack the containment vessels, there's no containment. At the Fukushima reactors with an S, with an S. That wasn't a typo. Let me keep going. New images show all the melted fuel is gone from reactors. Fukushima reactor. And so this was number two. Or, hang on. Yeah, I think so. No, this is March 20, 2015. We presume the fuel still in the containment vessel, but we need to check someday. <laughs> right, so all, what they're saying is Kyoto, NHK, Machini, all of these people took it, they got some x-rays, blah, blah, blah. Let's keep going. Because I'll, I'll digress, you know me. Many scientists are emphasizing this fable. The Fukushima, I call it the Fukushima fable. The fuel pool's fable. And so let me just touch on the fable itself. Uh, so the fuel pool fable goes like this. Number four collapses have been told during a 50-year continual you cannot contain. So this was the PR from April 6, 2012, because they were setting this up to fool everybody. And if you don't really understand, like again, I'm going to come back to that headline again. And just give me one second, bear with me, because we're talking about such a complicated, um, we're talking about such a complicated subject for most people. And so what we got here, the building's detonated, but inside, these are all official pictures, but inside they claim it looks like that up in the corner, right? So how can it, and so I can't see myself here, so I don't know which way to point at this time. But how can one exist inside the other? Is ludicrous. But nobody asks that question because nobody gets to see these two pictures together. See? They don't show you that. They don't say that that is inside of that. Okay? That's not how that works. They don't look show you these two pictures and say that is inside of that. What they do is they show you that beautiful picture and say they're working on getting the fuels out. Right? But they won't show you these pictures side by side like I'm doing. But see, look, I put number four there, but look what the World Nuclear News, one of the biggest propaganda machines on the planet in reality, showed a picture below, but look at the picture alongside of it, number four, the reality of it. Look at the ceiling inside the picture that they're showing you, right behind me. You, do you see how that works? Yeah, you know what I'm saying to you? Is that all the media come out and showing you, these are all official pictures, but I put the pictures right behind me, of the explosion in the building to get people to show you that the headline is totally ludicrous, but yet all of them came out. That was the 18th of November, 2013. Uh, that's BBC. I just showed you that one, did I? Okay. Next one. It said Dorn inside of it. I showed you that video earlier. Hang on. So keep your eye on the dates on these things if you can. 18th of November, 2013, informable. And they showed you the picture. Below, but alongside of it is the actual pictures. How can you get the one and, and have the other one without showing you any kind of construction or any kind of technique or any kind of grand ceremony or any kind of proof whatsoever that one exists inside the other is ludicrous. They don't do that for you. So CBC News here in Canada, they showed you that beautiful fuel pool, but look at the building alongside that I put there for you in the explosion so you can comprehend how big that lie really is. That's Unit 4. How can Unit 4, hang on, I'll get another one for you. RT question more. Look at that up in the top corner. 
But look at the picture I put here for you to show you what the building looks like. But look below our T article and you'll see they got a beautiful, symmetrical, undamaged, unblemished people standing up, right? Look, see people standing up down there? But nobody is inside of that building, ever. And it's much worse than this, right? And here's Tokyo Electrical Power saying in, fuel removal from Unifor of Fukushima Daiichi. And he show you the two pictures over there, right? And he tore off the top of the building and he put a structure up and across it, but that fuel pool is not in there, <laughs> right? And the building blew up, see? But the date on it is important. And November the 18th, 2013 on that date, right? And so, so what I'm establishing for you is everybody, look, even motherboard ran out and show you that picture there. And then another picture right below, with two pictures in a row. And I show you the damaged reactor buildings alongside of it, right? So who's the more honest person, me or them? Look at physics.org. Physics.org shows a beautiful symmetrical building with a roof. And I show you the building as it, now they tore all of this off it. So let's go look at a couple of quick pictures of that and go back to those headlines. Is it there? Is it here? Is it everywhere? I got it right there. Hang on. Reactor for evaporated. Uh, and let me cover a headline up here for a second. Fukushima disaster, Tokyo Supercore scenario. Is this the one I want? Yeah. And so, Fukushima Daiichi status. Unit 1, core damage. Unit 2, core damage. Unit 3, core damage. Unit 4, core damage. Unit 5, core damage. Unit 6, core damage. Seawater injected. Seawater injected. Seawater injected. You get where I'm coming from. They hit all of that away from you too, see? And so I just got a couple more pictures to show you. Of that one, we'll go back to the headlines. And sometimes I fumble. And sometimes I don't. And so today I did. And maybe the, maybe the picture I'm looking for is down here. Dana, yeah, there it is. I just seen it. Come back, buddy. You're my buddy. Where'd you go, buddy? Come on, Dana. Get your act together, Dana. And so, dead man walking. These people here are the homeless. They were thrown away like toilet paper. And so, they built the structure up and across it, but it doesn't touch it. And then they took all the top stories off of where the fuel pole is and the reactor is, and all they're left with is this bottom floor. <laughs> right? I got another picture coming up. Hang on. I got another picture coming, mister. I have to come back to here to get it. And then we'll go back to the headlines. But if you look at the building, it's destroyed all the way to the floor, right? And look over here. How can that be inside of that? It can't. See, look at the walls. Look at the ceilings. Just think about what I'm saying to you. Think about Seth Dorn saying that he was inside of reactor four, right? And so let's get back to the headlines. And so how are we doing on time? 44, we got 15 minutes left. Okay, let's boogie. Uh, many, many scientists are emphasizing, we just covered that one. Armageddon has spent fuel pool number four collapsed. March 26, 2013 or 12. So a whole year before those other headlines. They were setting the stage. Most likely consequences is that reactor 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 get out of control. I believe the country will be evacuated if number 4 pool collapse. Well, it should be evacuated because the whole country is radiated. See? Because it did collapse right away. It burnt. It burnt right away. There's, there's, there can be no doubt about that. And just hang on one second. One quick one. And so it don't matter. I'll get rid of that and get back to the headlines. Finish out. Uh, a global catastro catastrophic event like we have never before experienced. Number four collapsed. Common spent fuel pulled with 6,375 fuel rods. No, it's assemblies. Not fuel rods. See the laws. It's easy to, to accidentally write down fuel rods when the, when the thing says assemblies. Now, to get rid of that, because each assembly got 80 rods, it's 510,000 rods. 
That's um, 9.17 million pounds. And so this was the cover up. 85 times greater than Chernobyl. Ho ho! It's thousands and thousands and thousands of Chernobyls. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl was a half a million. Even Caliga, you know, it's been fuel pool number four. Now, I've done it too, don't get me wrong. I fell for it because I believed in these people. Collapses, I'm evacuating my family from Boston. She already did because they, it already did, but they didn't tell us. But everybody had to come out. If they wanted to get up in the media, you had to come out and sing that song, and then you'd be allowed to say all the other stuff you wanted to say. So everybody compromised rather than tell the truth. And, I mean, Calicott wrote a lot of books. She's got a lot of money. Never donated to the Fukushima Expedition for Life. Neither did Gunderson. Neither did Busby. Neither did any of these people. I can guarantee you. But still, I mean, they got their useful purposes, don't they? Another even more dangerous possibility, but if you tell a lie, why you use See, to me, that's, that's just me. I'm just, that is who I am. I can't change that about me. That I disrespect these people because they didn't tell the truth when they had the opportunity, when everybody was being quoted. All she had to do says, well, if spent fuel pool existed, I wouldn't have evacuated my family from Boston. Canadian nuclear scientists, or maybe she was too cheap to move her family out of Boston. That was a way of keeping them there. Oh, yeah, no, if it collapses, I'll, I'll move you out of there. Canadian nuclear scientists, another even more dangerous possibility to fire at the spent fuel pool. Number four, reignition of the chain reaction can occur if the fuel rods move slightly. Oh, they're in a cigarette pack. <laughs> There's nothing left there. You can check the emails down below my site. There's a couple of million of them. Right away, you'll hear about Unit 4. Everything was gone. Concern over mechanical stability of unit number four is legitimate. But you see how they propagated the, host, the hoax. Spent fuel pool number four boil after powerful New Year's quakes, says plant worker. It just keeps coming. <laughs> you want a job, get it to tell people it boiled. Spent nuclear fuel pool catches fire. That's all you need to know. Worse than a meltdown. Right. New York Times, March the 14th, 2011. Three days later, we were told the truth. That's why we're doing these headlines the way we're doing it. A dammy spent fuel pool had 204 rods into it. That's probably assemblies. Well, 80 rods in each assembly is uh, 4H would have been 32. <coughs> you know what I say? The numbers don't work, see? You remember, uh, Yale professor, all humanity will be threatened for thousands of years. But well, all of the Pacific Ocean is dead till the end of time. You can never get it back. That will migrate to all the water tables are connected. Every day, tens of thousands of miles is picked up through convection and evaporation and distributed throughout the entire continental communities. Just makes me sick. Did I get all that? Danger could collapse. Collapse. So you built the structure up and across it, but not touching it. Top scientists refute Japanese government. Copus. Copus. Is that a real word you should be using for this? A significant part of the overall cesium from the number four spent fuel pool. Well, they're alluding that the spent fuel pool is gone. It's gone. Right. Enormous amounts of plutonium at number four. That's why they don't want to tell you it's gone, because there was an enormous amount of plutonium in danger. In danger. And the pool is cracked and leaking. And everybody ran away and they put a hose up on the roof and sprayed it into the building. He said, oh, it's all fine. Go back to sleep. Shut up, slaves. Renewed nuclear chain reaction feared at the spent fuel storage pool. That's number four. Number four. March the 20th, 2011. Because the chain reaction doesn't stop. Right, so they report on it. Oh, I think there's something going on over there. And somebody says, yeah, I think there's a criticality. And they write that down there. But what it was, it never stops, see? Bonnie point number four, spent fuel pool at 212. <laughs> I wish. Nuclear engineer, enormous amount of plutonium at number four, spent fuel pool in danger of catching fire. April the 13th. Water injection, not enough to cool the pool. The workers find a large hole in the water. The water injection was a cement truck. They flew in days later, weeks later. They sprayed salt water in there, remember, originally, for the first 40 days. You couldn't cool a pool, and you couldn't cool the reactors, because they all melted down and disappeared. So you just sprayed water in there for the cameras, and said, no, no, we got it under control. 
Electricity cut at reactor number three and four. Cooling system shut down. Okay. That's number three and four. Do you think there was... Uh, do, do you think there's light bulbs that are hanging that are working? Huh? Do you think, like, the fans are working? Do you think, like, uh, the computers that are doing that rubble are working? So the headline itself is the law, you see? There's no way there's a fuel pool there. It's gone. The whole building was wrecked. The 10-story building is gone. It blew up. It's The fuel pool is a mile away. Miles away in some cases. No major change in the radiation around the plant. <laughs> Unable to activate backup cooling system. Gee, I wonder why. There's a cut fire, blew up, and cut fire, blew up, and cut fire, blew up, and lost its entire inventory in the first couple of hours, days, weeks, whatever. The chain reaction took off and consumes everything around it all the time. A fuel pull can be a chain reaction just like a reactor core, like a meltdown in a reactor, no different. That's why there's so much issues around this. This is gallows laugh, folks. Tefco to try and get number four fuel pool cooling system running again on Sunday. <laughs> I got to bring up a clip. <laughs> Look at the picture behind me. They're going to get that fuel pool. Look at the water they're pumping it up there. Now they're going to get the fuel pool working again. And it looks like that, right? The artificial pictures. So <laughs> I laugh every time I read that headline. Because it's so ludicrous to me. It don't, <laughs> don't make any sense, see? Cooling system back on. It's been fuel pool for whatever. Many scientists are emphasizing. Oh, we've done that one. Thank goodness. U.S. nuclear official raised possibility of nuclear fallout. That's back to the beginning of it. Radioactivity be released directly into the atmosphere. Hey, blah, 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 blah. Let's keep going anyway. And so you and the four fable. Let's go cover a couple more of those headlines. We didn't give them all. There's only a few left. We still got a couple minutes till the end of the show. We still got a good seven, eight minutes. I can whack through a whole bunch of headlines. Canadian nuclear scientists, and we'll do a question and answers if there's any questions and answers. Another even more dangerous possibility than fire at spent fuel pool reignition of the chain reaction. Uh, we covered that one. That's where we left off, was it? Hang on. Right there. Uh, okay, so maybe I got the wrong one. Okay, that's not the one I was looking for. That was my fault. Crisis. That's the one I was looking for. Over 80% of the Japanese voters do not trust the government's information about Fukushima. And the other 20% are just going along to get along with TEPCO because they work for them or their families work for them or they work for the government or they're pro-government. Government reports suggest the situation far worse than meltdown. It's the worst possibility in a nuclear accident. June 8th. We didn't need to wait that long. USA is blasting a hole in Fukushima reactor with military explosives. March the 16th. Because don't know what else we can do. We can blow shit up really good. Let's try that. <laughs> Let's make it as worse as we can. We'll blow it up again. Reflects a sense of alarm, I suppose. Because <laughs> these are ludicrous. This is all your mainstream media. I don't know. Nobody bothered questioning. In any of these headlines, the media never once questioned... And, you know, even when you talk about bananas, potatoes, your media not one time said, well, you know, I don't take his like bananas. Not once. Not one media ever questioned the official narrative. Nothing. They all just regurgitated it up like they were feeding a little bird. Tepco officials admits there will be a major delay to contain the crisis because of a triple meltdown. Stabilize the reactors. Yeah, by 2012. Probably not. By 3,012, probably not. By 4,012, you think there's going to be anything left on the planet by then? The ocean is dead, in case you didn't know. I'll cover that at the end of the show. Nowhere to run hot radioactive particles in Seattle. At 50% of the level seen in Tokyo. 50% of the level seen in Tokyo. Because the jet streams are real. I know. Go figure. Let me show you something. I know this is the most shocking thing to imagine, but, but that model is actually real. That's a 40-day model. It's still not finished counting through the 40 days yet, but it's getting to the 40-day model, and then it goes, and it's only based upon two isotopes, 
from a single reactor from just a couple of days is not based up on the constant, ongoing, perpetual machine that this thing is in Japan. This is a perpetual motion machine in Japan. What you're seeing now will never stop coming in there. That, that, and that's nothing. There should be at least another 2,000 uh, isotopes in that model. And there should be four more reactors and the four spent fuel pools with the hundreds of reactor cores in them that was atomized in aerosol in this model. And if, if these atoms you're looking at in that model, they're atoms, if these atoms you're looking at in the model, you can put 2,000 on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. But if you could see them, you wouldn't be able to see me. You wouldn't be able to see the hand in front of your face, no matter where you're to on the planet. In that first year. And even now, you have all you can do to see the hand out here. We are being exterminated, and we need to fight back, and we need to come up with technology. And every day we have 4,340 peer-reviewed academic studies published in North America, and the copyrights go to Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley. And these three have 20,000 academic journals. And by the way, the Trans-Pacific Air Pollution is well known. So you might not believe the jet streams, but the Trans-Pacific Air Pollution is real. And I know it takes like 12 years of university before you can finally accept the jet streams are real for the average person. But what about the studies on this stuff? But Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley, the three publishers, they get the academic copyrights to all your journals at all your universities throughout New North America for free. And you don't get to read it because it's locked up on a paywall. Because they want you to listen to Fox and CNN and MSNBC and BBC and all the cheerleading, bootlicking, lapdogs of these industries. The nuclear is the most powerful industry. It's got the biggest um, lobbyists on the planet. And it terrifies everybody with terrorist laws and terrorist drills. The terrorists might get a couple of grams and, grams and pollute our cities with a dirty bomb. Meanwhile, Japan has wrecked anything a terrorist could ever do. A terrorist can never mimic what we got done now. All the terrorists, which is created and funded by your governments to overthrow people that they want overthrown and then use to demonize that country till the end of time and to justify the military-industrial strong-arming nations out of their natural resources. It's disgusting and it got to stop. There is no future as it is right now. There's no future if we keep doing what we're doing. Zero future for everything on this planet. Hot radioactive particles. So, a scientist has shown that a single particle will cause a cancer in your lungs. Eases the fears on the West Coast. So the average person in Seattle breathed 10 hot radioactive particles a day. That's 10 different cancers a day, basically, in your lungs. And so if you don't understand that, all I can tell you is you have to go and understand this particular guy. That's what he looks like. That's his name. That's the place where he, for 35 years, he's killed beagle dogs and beagle puppies by getting them to inhale plutoniums, right? And so the studies, he's got 94 studies over 35 years, they're still at it. And they showed that even the smallest amount, bone tumors were found in 93 dogs after three years, lung tumors in 46 dogs after three years, liver tumors after uh, three years in 20 of the dogs, etc., etc. And so dog's life is seven compared to your human. But what happens if you were to give these dogs 10 hot particles a day every day? That's the question I'm proposing to the academics out there that are sitting on the sideline and, and saying, well, I'm not going to get into the fray. Well, it's too late for you to get into the fray anymore because no one will ever trust you because you didn't jump on board anyway. Right? And when this was happening, everybody, you know, this should be spoken every time someone opens their mouth. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. Perry. Because when it goes through a chain reaction, it's two million times worse than any other element on the planet. <clears throat> and so let's wind it down. And we come in, and I'm not going to get through any more tonight. I don't need to. That's Unit 4. And Unit 4 is a, is a wrecking machine on this planet. We're not worried about it tipping over because it's already gone. The damage is already there. All the worst fears that they, they said could happen has, are happening. The death of the Pacific is the most realest thing 
imaginable. We flushed that out with 9,000 headlines. The nuclearproctologist.org. I run on donations. And I haven't got any donations since I got back from this expedition. And I can't move further ahead. We still have to raise $12,000 for a proper TriCaster so we can do interviews, so we can do these proper presentations. We still got to raise money to get out there and push back against this system. And there's no one leading that charge. There's no one really out there telling you the stuff I'm telling you in any context of what I'm telling you. And nobody that's completely honest like us, outside of us, is what I'm saying. It's not me, it's us. I couldn't have done nothing this without everybody helping me. And certain people in particular that done more than that they probably should have, but did. You know, Lane Campbell, Janet and Fred Saxon, people like this that have went beyond anything imaginable to see this succeed and see this get to this point. And, and we can't let everything we got done fall apart. We still got a full operation ready to go on the drop of a hat, but it costs huge money to run this every day. And so the nuclear proctologist, if you go over there, go over to contacts, you'll find donation buttons. You can donate at PayPal to Dana Durnford at hotmail.com. Uh, PayPal, you'll find links below these videos. And in courtship says Chega and Kombucha tea helps. And um, I agree. And Max uh, Prana, LA Illusion. And Nep Killer. And so wait, now the show is over, and I'm just saying hi to everybody in the chat room and looking for any questions. Albert, thank you. You bet, buddy. S uh, Sylvia, Ellie, Shanikin, Zoe, yeah. When I, I cook everything for Zoe, her, her meals for her, organic food only. And, and uh, like when I'm cooking vegetables or anything like this, I use a dandelion if I got it there. That's an instinct now, uh, and so the food absorbs it, plus it's in there anyway. So it puts a better way for the dogs to absorb it. And I only feed her raw meat only. I don't cook the dog's meat because their uh, stomachs are not meant to uh, process cooked meat. They're only process, their, their, their enzymes in that are meant for raw meat, right? And so they can eat raw bones no problem whatsoever because raw bones are soft. When you cook them, they get hurt. And when they're soft, you can get all that calcium when they're raw. And so they need that in their diet. Thank you, Hap Kitty, Coins, and yeah. And let me see if I'm looking for a question for Dana. Is iodine still being newly produced from the ongoing fissions at the site? Yes, yeah. And so that'll continue to be produced through the chain reaction. That's the emblematic sign of the chain reaction. And we know that certain people out there I'm not going to get into it today. Jay, Colin, Ken Viersler, that I've covered <laughs> extensively. Uh, they're the people that tell you that there's nothing to worry about. And like they test the ocean water for, for, and they went all over the ocean in big, huge, million dollar operations, multi million dollar operations, and all they took was water sample. They never took fish, they never counted bird species, they never collected kelp, they never tested algae or, you know, the phytoplankton, the base of the food chain, or any other thing for. Radioactive isotopes, no, they just check water and they never find it. And when they do find it, nothing to worry about. Shut up, go back to sleep. Right, Sean again. Uh, Adam, thank you, Adam, buddy. And Chuck, and I know Adam, I don't think Adam's ever missed a show, like most people this day and age, but Adam's been around a long time. And we see anybody. Great show again, thank you to Radical. Home Goddess. I just think I call you Radical Godness. Goddess. I don't know why you go godness for all the time, but and she puts out lovely videos, very thoughtful videos, trying to help people. The radical home goddess, and it's a it's a very important role she plays. And long before I knew who she was or she was doing this, I'm sure she was doing that. Right, that's her. Obviously, her personality is a very loving, gentle, kind, caring people, and like everybody else here. And she has the courage to speak out, and so that's why I give her extra. Kudos in the comment section. Uh, YouTube, beautiful girl by Dana on YouTube. Uh, after the show, we'll come in here and talk to people. Now, I noticed the last couple of days we get 25 or so thumbs down before the show is over, but we don't get anybody there saying, well, Dana, I didn't agree with this, so I'm going to give you a thumb down. But no challenges whatsoever. I just get 25 thumbs down. 
And so that's the same account of doing it. Just one person with 25 accounts. So you, yeah, Leaf Pickles. That's Sylvia. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and so folks, I'm just letting the comments scroll. I can't keep up with it all because we get, and these don't show up after, but I'm recording them all for posterity and so that I can try to go through and, and find questions after. I'm recording it all, in the, you know, so. Because Google doesn't put the comments there and we'll get anywhere from 600 to 1,000 to several thousand on a video of comments. Uh, and people chatting in the chat room, people asking questions among themselves. But actual, anybody that says, well, Dana, you know, all your headlines are wrong, that's not gonna happen. And so Cotton, no one, no, please check your messaging. Do you got any idea how many messaging I get? And I, I can only get to it when I get to it. But I know the trolls, anybody who comments here, they're gonna get an email uh, telling them junk about me, and that's all you can do. That's the troll, the, the PR firm has to attack me some way. They got nobody else to attack. There's 2,000 PR firms out there. We are leading the charge. And so the more they attack me, the more they try to smear me, the more you know that you should look into what I'm saying. The more they, they can contact you and say, well, Dana's this and Dana's that, is you really need to look at the data that I'm providing and see why they're trying to smear me. And I mean, they got me destroyed, my whole reputation, my name, but it's all lies is what they're spreading about me. And so I ignore that. I don't care about it. Yeah, Adam, trolls are cowards. Hi, Tree Wolf. And Kate, of course, runs the Fukushima Hounds, and you'll find Kate's link below. Uh, that's an independent website about Fukushima chat room and that does support me 100% and has raised amazing amount of funds to fund this operation and has never asked of anything of me ever, but has given to me constantly. In every waking moment, every time I've ever called up Kate and asked her, because she posted and noticed no matter what time of the day or night it was, was extraordinarily happy to hear from me, there was no issue and was gladly get right on top of it. Could I ask for any more uh, fortune and, and luck than that of the people that supported me? No. Will I ask for more? <laughs> yes, unfortunately, because that's the only way this is going to get done. I'm not Ken Buster where people are going to give me four or five million dollars. Or trust me, the nuclear industry would be on his back with his thumb in his mouth crying. I guarantee it. I'm a force to be reckoned with when I'm unleashed and I'm able to do the things I can do. And right now, we're doing that. But because we have a battle ahead of us, I need to become strong. I need to become powerful like the opposition. And in powerful in the sense of that my, my voice carries that weight far and wide. And so spread this material, these episodes to the four winds. Hi, Thomas and Thomas Ackerman. You'll find his links below. And we like Thomas. He's an extremely good-natured person and a crazy, amazing artist. And Kevin Blanche is down below. And if you're not familiar with Kevin Blanche's work, here's a recent escapade of Kevin in a foreign country, going down to visit the IAEA and try to hold him accountable. It was just him and one more person. But anyway, he impacted them. I can assure you, listen to this one. It's only a 20 second clip. Here we go, here we go. No more killing people for money. No more killing Here's your people couple, for your money. big IAEA boards right no here. These are your kingpins no right here. IAEA are mass murderers. They killed the Pacific Ocean. You, thanks for giving me leukemia. The IAEA are mass murderers. Mass murders the IAEA. What happens when you get cancer? What happens when you get it? What happens when you give yourself cancer? We'll keep these going. Stay on tuned. And so here's another individual out there doing battle all the time getting in their faces all the time, but he has to do it his way. I have to do it everybody's way, but he does it his way. He's his own man. And that's why I respect Kevin so much. He is his own man. He will do what he, no matter if you hate him, he's still gonna do what he's gonna do. He don't care what you think. He knows what he's doing in his heart, has to get done, and that you have to get out there. And it's unorthodox. It's on it. A lot of times, it's just, you know, it's draining to go out and confront these people all the time. But if nobody does it, how will they ever know, right? And there's only two people that are doing that. Think about that. Behind me is the fallout. Over here is the natural radionuclides. And so look at lead Beckwells, right? Look at iridium Beckwells. But look at uranium as milligrams because there is no Beckwells. 
It's only after it goes through a chain reaction that it's giving off the Beckles. And look behind me, 7,000 Beckles in a liter. But we don't do that normally. We measure cubic meter. There's 1,000 liters in a cubic meter. You can do the math. Okay, 7 million Beckles in your hot tub. There's no snow in the mountains in British Columbia, Canada. We documented that at the Fukushima Expedition for Life. You'll see mountains in the backgrounds. And as we upload, I got amazing amount. We never got no pictures up yesterday. I actually forgot about it. I went right to bed after the show and crashed. And Jan Brooks, Miss Milky the Clown One, uh, phoned me and woke me up yesterday afternoon, but I was just waking up anyway, I guess. And, but I mean, I just, I'm so exhausted with what I do. I wake up early every morning now, you know, daylight and I'm, before daylight, and I'm at this till the, we stream at 10 a.m. I don't stop. And I have to iron my shirts and everything every day on top of everything else. And so it's an enormous amount of work to do what I do every day. So we got all this man-made stuff, but jack shit natural. When it used to be all natural and no man-made whatsoever. And there's no man-made levels that are safe. Like the, what, like the, the headlines that showed you, a single atom in, internally will cause a cancer down the road. But there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies. Let's come back over to the chat room in case I forget. And so today was Unit 4. Let's put up a picture of Unit 4 in the background as we talk in the chat room. Yeah, and Kevin's an artist. You're an artist too. Your eye colors. Steve Parsons. Dean, if you had a million dollars, how could you make the cars better? Well, I would set up. I, well, I need $12,000 for a TriCaster so I can interview people. A million dollars means I can rent out all the halls across the countries. Pre, right, and save a lot of money that way for doing the lectures. And right now it costs so much money to rent these buildings, I can't afford to rent a single building to go into a community and do a lecture. And you know what I mean? It's just, and then the trip there, the trip to get the data, to go out and buy the proper Geiger counters and to display that. Like my thought was, if I had a lot of money, a million is not enough, but if I had a lot of money to do this particular project, I would establish uh, underwater cameras throughout the coastline of Canada and coastline cameras right on the ocean high quality, live streaming it out. And I would feed that out at a nominal uh, fee, like a dollar a month or something, in order to sustain it. And if I was to return money back through these processes, I will pay back all the money that's donated. And that is one of the things I plan on doing for the Fukushima Expedition for Life is repaying every single penny to everybody out there with the proceeds from the book or the documentary that's coming about this. And then the rest will be used for battle. That's who I am. That's what I'll be doing. You know, I would like to have a 300-foot ship full of scientists, and a million dollars can't cover anything like that. They couldn't even fund it. And so, unfortunately, someone like me would never get access to it, where the people that would go out and do stupid, insignificant things and hoard it and everything else will get all the money. Like Ken Busler gets $4 million dollars and doesn't find nothing, just for one boat venture. You have no concept of what I could do with something like that. And how just a $12,000 uh, donation that we have to start working on really soon, and you can do find a link below my site to start donating, but that is, I need that desperately. I can sell the Zodiac or parts of it to get that, but I can't, because we need that too. In case there's an event, we need to be able to launch and get out there. But it takes a lot of money just to fund it a day, let alone a week let alone 260 days. It's a stupid amount of money. And I have guilty conscience about that all the time, that the only way I can resolve that in my own self is if I pay everybody back the money because I think, cause that's the way it should be. That if I was to make money from doing all this off money that was donated to me, the least I could do is pay back everybody. And that I, can't, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do that, if I had the opportunity to do it, that there's a moral compass I have that I don't owe nobody nothing. And, but in one sense, I owe the whole world the opportunity, in particular, Elaine and Janet, a huge amount of those um, emotions and feelings. And, and, and it's a very humbling thing when people give you that opportunity. Trust me. To me, it's a humbling thing anyway. I don't know about anybody else, but to me, it's a very humbling thing to be... And, but it's a big responsibility. And so my responsibility is still going strong all this time later, but now that I've seen the whole coastline, now that I experienced the coastline for 260 days, up to five months without coming home, now that I experience 
what it takes to, to get through all of this for everybody, including myself and the courage and the tenacity and just the foresight that if we didn't do it then we might never get that other opportunity and so we needed to finish it out and we did. You know, that taught me something that I didn't know. Maybe I did, but that I didn't know that I still had it in me that that once I commit, I commit, and there, there, you can't switch me off. And now I know at 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can't switch me off. And even killing me won't switch me off because I'm everywhere now, right? My videos are everywhere. And that personality, that camaraderie, that ability to motivate people with honesty and, and truth, you know, because that's where I come from, that is the foundation of, of uh, who I am, will carry me no matter if I got nothing will still carry me and I'll still hold my head up high and but I'm just saying that's my hopes and dreams you're listening to that I can I can excel and do the things that need to be done because Jay Cohen's not going to do it Ken Buesler is not going to do it Woods Hole is not going to do it none of your universities none of your governments none of your academics nobody out there is going to go do this nobody will go do what we already done and nobody's going to try to get twelve thousand dollar tricaster and agonize how to use it properly for a couple of months and solve that like I'm doing with this broadcasting that I'm able to do now. You have any idea how difficult it is to do what I'm doing? Just to broadcast live with the ease that I do. And, you know, five years ago I would shoot the video 30 times. I still couldn't post it. I would edit the crap out of it. Now I can shoot a live stream and not miss nothing, not make a, barely ever make a slip on a number, for instance. It's very rare and extremely articulate is because I put everything I got into this and I have, I have put every and so many people out there into me to make sure that we succeed and so is that whole foundation that we, that we are built upon that predicates the future of where I'm going and want to go and that I don't know at any given time how I'm going to get there but I do know I will get there I do see that visually I have a very vivid sitting there with five people interviewing daily, all day long, that, that the many people as I can get the interview about pertinent parts of this equation to build that puzzle up and to have those resources sitting there to use as a bludgeoning tool against the opposition that is lulled into this slick Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen lion smear machine. Like the smear machine is attacking me, but it, it doesn't slow me down. It doesn't keep me up at night. It doesn't leave me in fear when I leave my home or at my home. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't hurt me when I read those comments about me that are on, unfounded and without and by ghost accounts that nobody will come out and physically attack me, like I do with Jay Cohn. Like I'll sit here. I'm Dana Dern for the nuclear proctologist. Here's the documentation. Nobody will do that against me. No, because he can't. Because I'm, I'm a manifestation of everybody in every comment that had it ever asked for somebody to please go do anything. That somebody please go do something. That's who I am. Take care, folks.